Shall we start? CMOS process N tab, P tab, and twin tab. This, today we will talk about how to develop CMOS. Normally, CMOS has N mass and P mass. CMOS means complementary mass. Because N mass and P mass both are there, it is called complementary. N mass is called N tab, P mass is called P tab, therefore C mass is called both of them, that's why it is called twin tab. So we'll be more concentrating today on twin tab. Okay. Before we go anything further, the first we'll talk about comparison between bipolar and C mass technology. C mass, low static power dissipation. When the CMOS is low power dissipation, bipolar is high power dissipation. Second, high input impedance in CMOS because input is silicon dioxide layer. Here, low input impedance because input is forward and we have high driven current. CMOS has high noise margin but uh, bipolar has low voltage swing. CMOS has high packing density, then bipolar has low packing density. Because the CMOS is very small and there are a lot of interconnections involved, that's why you can pack more in less space. Fourth one, low packing density. Whereas in BJT is high, sensitivity high, I mean size is high, the packing density is low. Fifth one, high delay sensitivity to load. Low delay sensitivity in BJT. But have, all are good, all are advantages, but the sixth point is drawback. Lower GM, GM is approximately 2 milliamperes per volt. Whereas in bipolar it is high GM, that is 50 milliamperes, that's approximately 25. Seventh one, bidirectional capability, drain and source are interchangeable. Because we can have two directional, if there's no junction involved, you can send that side, this side. So indirectly current can flow in both the directions, where a BJT has only one direction, that is essentially unidirectional. This is the basic comparison between CMOS and bipolar technologies. In general, as a switch CMOS is good, as an amplifier BJT is good. Then let's go to the fabrication of CMOS. In CMOS technology, as I already told, we will talk about uh, if it is N mass, the substrate will be P. If it is P mass, the substrate will be N. And uh, remaining things are being developed on that. But it's good if they can have a common substrate, we call them as a well. So, substrate is generally called a well. It is just like a well, we put a lot of things in that. In a substrate, we put everything one upon the other. So, substrate is generally called a well. So, we can call this as well and into well we develop things. Then, CMOS fabrication can be completed by using three technologies. NWEL, PML technologies, that is separately you can take N and P and then bring CMOS. Second is twin well technology, both of them together. Third is silicon ons insulator, SOI, silicon on insulator. So these are three technologies that we have in fabricating CMOS. Then when you talk about N tab, what is it? As already told you, N well, you take a P as a substrate and then develop N upon that. If it is a P, take N as a substrate and develop on that. This is how we develop the N well and N tab or P tab. What is the general process? First thing, create N-well regions and channel stop regions. 
Grofield oxide and gate oxide. That's called thin layer. Because once you develop a la N layer, N wells, upon that we talk about small thin layer. Then upon that deposit and pattern polysilicon layers. Whatever the pattern you want, you deposit on that. Then as we discussed in the previous lecture, we go for implantation, we go for the diff diffusion into the substrate. Then create contact windows, deposit pattern metallic layers. So we need to deposit some pattern metallic layers. Finally, there will be all internal components are connected through the metallic layers. So this is the general process for making and well. Then let's see how actual CMOS has been developed. As we said first, we need to make a N and P and bring them together. So P take a P subtrade, develop N upon it. That comes a N channel. In that you have to have P and N together. So drain and source are N in between there is a channel. Most of the time we use E MOSFETs. E MOSFETs means no permanent channel. If it is depletion MOSFET, there is a permanent channel, but enhancement MOSFET, there is no permanent channel wherein that channel is induced or implanted. Then P well. What is the mask that we do? Mask 1. Define the area in which P well is diffused. Upon that, mask 2. Thin oxide layers are developed. Mask 3. On the thin layer, thin oxide layer, polysilicon layer is deposited. Mask 4. P plus mask is used to define P diffusion. Mask 5. The same you know, algorithm we have seen the flow chart, same thing happens here. The fifth step we call usually performed using negative things developed on P mask. Finally, N type material is formed. Mask 6. Contact cuts are now defined. How to make contacts? After making the contacts, means for example, drain and source, such contacts are being developed. And the seventh one is metal layer pattern is developed because we need to put a metallic layer so that we can. Uh, take the connection from there and lastly an overall passivation or a glass layer is now available to mask and we can any opening you want you can make through that so this is a eight uh, pro steps process in making n well and p well masses then what is twin well twin well means a matter of combination of n and p how is this twin well is made twin well is automatically c mass the same process is developed in step one we talk we take some substrate step two we take a phosphorus implanted on that step three will take a wafer selected with oxidation layer step four will use oxidation layer as a gates available there step five p and n channel source and drain are selected and source and drain elements are ready almost and we step six upon that we take some phosphorus layer and step seven aluminium is again used for metallization and after that eighth is again final layer is plasma deposited silicon layer is being used therefore whatever the steps that we have done for n mass and p mass separately the same type of steps are done in c mass individually together let me give you a circuit if it is circuit c mass you can see here p channel is up n channel is down you see the beauty of it the drain of that and drain of this are connected there's a lot of interconnection of elements when you have a lot of interconnection of elements we see this interconnection elements are brought together to see that the size will become lesser and then take vi and v not here if you make a truth table, you will understand this is acting as inverter. Another important thing is when this is on, this is off. When this is on, that is off. The net effect to current flowing through this is always zero. When the net effect to current is always zero, what happens is 
the net current what you get is zero therefore the overall current is zero therefore power dissipation is zero when the power dissipation is zero we call it as we make this as uh, for overall power dissipation is zero and hence p mass has least power dissipation or zero power dissipation but one thing you must be very clear when i say power dissipation is zero it is static power dissipation zero not dynamic how are this made it is just like previous we discussed again repeated first we make a mass or the substrate upon that we make n mass and p mass together and uh, overall as i said one of them is always off therefore the power dissipation is zero when the power dissipation is zero it has no heating problems but remember we use most of the time we use by default e mosfet that is enhancement mosfet we have threshold we have a v threshold value there that's the meaning of this v threshold so let's go to illustrative examples how to illustrate all that the process we have done question one what are the major steps in n well process let's see first one formation of n well second step n mass and p mass active areas being developed after that n mass and p mass developed a small thin layer of silicon dioxide upon that a pattern of polysilicon then p diffuse p plus diffusion n plus diffusion and after these two contact cuts we have to make some contacts upon the contacts ready you will put metallization there and through the metallization we take our whatever the requirement required connections required so this is all what i theoretically explained is now available in flowchart form these are the steps involved problem two what are the problems in cmos process in cmos the first difficulty we have is latch up latch up refers to a self sustaining low impedance path between the applied voltage and the ground because when you say it is a channel between applied voltage to the ground there is a problem at times it may happen direct self sustaining low impedance path second problem trench isolation it decouples bipolar transistors but also improves the isolation for n mos transistors so trench isolation is a problem third one control of threshold voltage for cmos for example threshold voltage is a good thing for noise margin and noise effect but if it is too high that's not good and that too, when you go for uh, two mosfets and uh, one will have a positive value and other will have a negative value and that matching will be a problem and supply is a problem so that's called control of threshold voltage for cmos structure question number 3 fabricate the inverter circuit using n well cmos process fabricate the inverter circuit whatever the circuit that you have seen you have seen a circuit called a p mos up and n mos down that we have to process and fabricate how we steer a step by step first we will take substrate upon the substrate we will take n well and this is silicon dioxide layer and in this portion is removed that is called photolithography and after this silicon dioxide layer is cut and polysilicon material is developed that's called thin oxide and then polysilicon thin oxide is sio2 layer polysilicon is also developed upon that this is called n well and n mask we take and we are going to put it upon this so we are going to diffuse n layer here this is n layer here this is n well and n mask here and uh, n well if you take p mask now take a p diffusion there so overall supply is here and this is becoming uh, n well and p well 
both are connected it can be called as CMOS process. Fabricate question number four. Fabricate the inverter circuit using P well process. Previous we have seen N well now we have to make P well and as you know if it is a P well the septate will be N. Well will be opposite. So N is here P is here and again the diffusion process polysilicon player everything comes there. So CMOS P well process is also available here. So finally whenever you want to have N mass and P mass and both of them this is how there is a diffusion and itching and masking process of it. Question number five. Explain the tin well CMOS and water fabrication P well and N well. I mean so far we have seen separately now I have to show you both of them together it's called twin. Twin well and when you see the twin well we have to make both N mass and P mass together. Look at this one by one. Like we have already developed in the first problem N well. Another problem we have seen P well. So P well mass inverter C mass inverter. And if we take this N well, P well put together is called twin tub C mass. So in a twin tub C mass, you have both N well here and P well here. This is also mass, this is also mass, C mass. And both of them together, we call it as twin tub C mass together. Sixth question Obtain the drain to source IDS and VDS relationship. Suppose you look at here, this is the length of the gate, width of the gate, drain here, source here, between drain and source you have gate. And if you see that, what are the equations available? This is IDS, that everybody know what the definition of ID, charge by time constant or time. Then using all that, if you use this time constant is here, L by mu VDS. And there are two regions, non-saturation region, saturation region. And one of the good things that we have is VGS is equal to VGS minus VT is effective voltage at the gate. And VT is threshold. So very standard definitions we have. IDS is equal to CG mu L by L square VGS minus VT VDS minus VDS by 2 and if you really substitute this equation at saturation VGS minus VT is VDS and this will become VDS square therefore if you subtract it till 2 will come here VGS minus VT whole square. So VGS minus VT whole square we supply from IDS here. Seventh one, obtain the circuit symbols of P and N mass in enhancement mode and depletion mode. Oh, that's a very old thing that we did in uh, FETS topic. These are the N mass. Enhancement here, N mass enhancement. All our enhancements, only depletion is thick line. This thick line is to say permanent channel. These are no permanent channel. But sometimes people use dotted line. So in NMOS you can have a dotted line or a non-thick line because permanent channel is not there. In a depletion mass you can have a thick line or a permanent line. That's what you mean about what you call the symbols. Eighth question. Compare the parameters of CMOS and bipolar. How do we compare CMOS and bipolar? It's a whole thing. IDS is mu C naught by 2 WL by L VGS minus V to whole square. That this all can be written as beta by 2 VGS minus V to whole square. Please remember both these equations are at uh, what you call saturation region where it is acting as an amplifier. And when you say I see here because this is a drain current I should talk about collector current. IS into e power QV by KT. 
gm 2 beta whole power half ids whole power half gm is ic by vt this is kt by q is nothing but vt so ic by vt is nothing but gm that's a standard thing of course here instead of writing vt is we have written kt by q so ids by area is this is here if you bring area here mu c naught by 2l into vgs minus vt square similarly ic by a is equal to 1 by base resistance mu n to tau b so these are the different relationships comparison just to tell you two things how much drain current how much electric current what is the gm there and what is gm here but one thing you must conclude bipolar has a large output current and large gm but mass has less output current less gm that's why most of the time we go for by c mass instead of c mass alone b mass alone separately and by c mass is a combination of uh, c mass followed by bjt therefore you have a very good conclusion there question number nine obtain trans conductance and output conductance of a mass transistor trans conductance output con trans conductance means id by vgs output conductance means id by vds so let's see what is happening gm by definition change in ids by change in vds okay if you use that you'll have gm is equal to cg mu l square by vgs by vt because square term here comes this way so gm is equal to beta into vgs minus vt this is actually trans conductance and what is output conductance that is basically at the output side so that is lambda ids into alpha whole power l by l 1 by l whole square so we have the conductances both at the trans conductance and for the output conductance question number 10 obtain the figure of merit for mass transistor look at this for example omega naught gm by cg mu l square vgs minus vt just now we have studied gm means uh, we have studied now cg cg cancel therefore this is 1 by tau sd now what's the conclusion you can make now omega naught is inversely proportional to l square proportional to mobility so these are the proportional relationships you have that is called figure of merit so this is about what you call illustrative examples that help us to understand the concept little better than pure theoretical things so i have chosen 10 problems to explain the theory once again in in terms of problems than direct theory work it out examples let's see the previous question papers based on our topic and that why we will understand how best our concept is sufficient enough to solve the problems. Problem 1. If P is passivation, Q is N-well implant, R is metallization, S is diffusion. Then what is the order in which they actually they are implemented in the CMOS process? We have already seen this question came in gate 2003 LED ECE and two marks. We have already seen the procedure once and the flow chart another time. And this is the question based upon that. If you really go back to that, this is the process, the standard N well CMOS process steps are first we'll put N well. That means Upon that, we put source and drain diffusion. Once the source and drain are ready, we do the metallization there. And upon the metallization, we go for the last step as passivation. Actually, there are eight steps. We have taken the, the question paper is only asking four. And if you put them together, this is the order in which we go for CMOS technology. Therefore, the option is B. B is the option for this technology. Question number two. That gate oxide in a CMOS process 
get oxide in a CMOS process is preferably grown using wet oxide, dry oxide, epitaxial deposition, ion implantation, implementation there. Gate 2013 EC1 mark. If you see CMOS fabrication process, gate oxide is grown using ion implantation. So when you go for ion implementation, because ion is nothing but a dioxide, ion is nothing but an insulator, dielectric material. So when you get ions, they are acting as oxidation layer. That's why the option is D. D is the option. Question number three. Consider the following statement in connection with CMOS inverter. This is the CMOS inverter. Where both MOSFETs are enhancement type and both have threshold of 2 volts. So when you say threshold of 2 volts, how does they work? Because please remember, the down one is N mass, upper one is P mass. That's why P mass and N mass combined. It's called complementary mass. T1 conducts when Vi greater than 2, natural. Because you are giving more than the threshold, it conducts. T is always in saturation when V0 is 0. See, when you say 0, when it says 0, it doesn't work on at all. When it doesn't become on, how it how is it true? So, only when it is on, we can call it as saturation. If you see the explanation, when you give 2 volts, the N MOSFET is on. When you give 0, it cannot become on. That's why statement 1 is true, statement 2 is false. Therefore, option is A. What is A? You want to see once again? Only statement 1 is true. That is A. Question number 4. In the CMOS inverter shown, if the transconductance parameter of the NMOS and PMOS transistors are Kn and Kp mu n COX and uh, omet Wn by Ln mu p into that is uh, mu n COX Wn by Ln mu p into COX Wp by Lp is equal to 40 mu a microamperes per volt square. One, one word to say this is simply k and the, the threshold voltages are 1 volt whether it is for N channel or P channel, 1 volt. We need to calculate the current. Is it, uh, so gate 2007, EC, 2 marks there. So look at here, before we go to solution, P mass and N mass, 2.5 volts given, where the threshold voltage is 1, therefore when you give 2.5, the more than the threshold, this conducts. And look at here, ID is equal to K by 2, Vgs minus Vt. K by 2 is, um, he said K is 40, therefore K by 2 is 20. 20 to 2.5 minus 1 is 1 1.5. 1 1.5 into 20 is 45, 45 microamperes. This is the answer, very simple answer for this combination of C mass. Therefore, option is C. Problem 5. Two identical NMOS transistors N1 and M2 are connected as shown below. V bias is chosen so that both transistors are in saturation. This both are in saturation. This is V bias. The equivalent GM of the pair of defined to be at the constant out. What is the equivalent one? Is it addition of those or multiplication of those? one of those are gm is divided by gm naught so these are the things that we need to settle he is asking us to calculate get 2008 ec2 marks one thing is very clear you know when they are, when the transistors are in totem pole i mean one upon the other they are in series when they are in series current is equal id1 is equal to id2 so when they are equal, then GM has to be equal because ID by VI, ID by VI because GM is equal. So it is nearly equal to GM of one or two, both are same. 
So it is neither sum nor multiplication, it is GM. It is not even GM by G0. Therefore, option is C. C is the option here. Statement. Because this is a linked, I mean, uh, linked answer, we need to calculate and substitute the first answer into the second problem. Consider C mass shown in figure. This is a P mass, N mass, 3 volts VG, and W by L ratio, that is mu C naught W by L is 1 milli. Indirectly, is talking about K, K value. Please remember, in most of the textbooks, some people call this as K, like Milman alkyas, mu C naught by W by L as uh, some people call as it is like a boiled state. So you, you need to have the different notations there. And that's why 1 milli ampere per volt square, that means per volts power minus 1. So let's calculate this. So when you calculate, let's go to the problem. 6. For small increase in Vg beyond 1 volt, which of the following gives the cut description of the region? When you give small increase in Vg beyond 1, N MOSFET is in saturation and P MOSFET is in your region because both cannot be in saturation. This is given in 2009. Look at here. For small increase in Vg beyond 1, N MOS definitely goes to uh, what you call a saturation region which is called amplifier region and P MOS doesn't go to amplifier region so it, because it is opposite so it is a non-saturation region and the non-saturation region we generally call triode region. Triode region is called non-saturation region. Option is D. D is the option for this. Now problem 7. Estimate the output V0 for Vg 1.5. How to use this? This is also a linked problem. So let me take you for this. Because these two are uh, in series, the currents are equal. Half Vgs minus Vt of n whole power Vgs minus Vt Vds. So, 1.5 is the voltage, 1 here, minus 2 plus 1 Vds, minus 1 minus Vds square, Vds itself is V0, therefore if you calculate that, 4 plus root 3 by 2 will come, and that's the option, therefore option is D. So, how to analyze and how to get an expression in this form is by serial transistors, but of course one is in P, other is in N because today totally we are talking about N mass, P mass and more so on C mass. Problem 8. The maximum concentration of the elements which can be dissolved in solid silicon at a given temperature. The maximum concentration of elements which can be dissolved in solid silicon at a given temperature is termed as solid solubility, dissolution coefficient, solidification index, concentration index. This is called in IES ENT. The maximum concentration of elements can be dissolved in a solid silicon and so it is, it is termed as solid solubility. Option is A. Solid solubility. Question number 9. Asset. The resistors and capacitors of fabricated on IC technology have few tolerances with respect to their absolute values. That's manufacturing. The reason. As all components of ICs are fabricated simultaneously, the ratio of tolerance is very low. This is in IES. Electronics and Communication 2010. Same question in IC technology. The resistors and capacitors fabricated using IC technology have few tolerances with respect to their absolute values. That's why in, when you talk about resistors, they always have a tolerances. As all the components IC are fabricated simultaneously, the ratio of tolerance is very low. Therefore, option is both are correct and one is linked to the other. Therefore, option is A. Asset and reason are true and reason is acting as 
answer for as said problem 10 a small signal resistance change in voltage by change in current kilo in kilo ohms bias voltage is given as 2 volts and the threshold voltage is 1 volt then uh, we have to calculate k is given as 40 micro calculate the value of the value of resistance not conductance a b c these are options are given and let's see this problem these are all the conditions discussed that's not a very important but directly go k 40 micro 2 minus 1 2 minus 1 is 1 so 40 40 in 10 power minus 5 1 by gm will give the resistance that's a 4 in 10 power minus 5 25 kilo ohms 25 kilo ohms is called option is b b is the option that's the end of the chapter